Corsican Arno Siasari, who sees himself as a youth icon and entertainer, posts pithy comments on the internet. His posts also refer to terror attacks like the recent one in Nice. They receive huge numbers of likes. President Hollande, could you please come over here and just explain to me what the state of emergency is good for? If someone can still just drive his truck up onto the sidewalk and kill 84 people. Thousands of young Corsicans follow Siasari's openly anti-Islamic messages. He says there are too many Muslims on Corsica. And the many Moroccans who live in his neighborhood on the outskirts of Bastia need to abide by the rules. Look at the Paizeno district. People are seen as sensitive here. But that's not true. If someone bothers someone else here, we don't hesitate to let them know. If that doesn't help, we use tougher methods. It gets violent. We take justice into our own hands. Corsicans are hot-blooded. Siasari likes to portray himself as a descendant of the FLNC freedom fighters. The Corsican nationalists fought for more independence from France for almost 40 years. They wanted to preserve their own language and cultural identity and fought for more national rights. Jean Biancucci was one of them, an armed fighter. Some of his compatriots are still serving long jail sentences. He says some young Corsican nationalists are right-wing populists and have little to do with his generation's campaign. My philosophy is quite simple. The Corsican people share a common fate. A real Corsican doesn't just live on Corsica. He needs to carry the island in his heart. That's more important here than on the mainland. And it goes for everyone, Catholics, Protestants and Muslims alike. Biancucci only ended the armed opposition to the government in Paris two years ago. It wasn't an easy decision. But the movement had been weakened and had been infiltrated by the Mafia. And Paris was paying more attention to Corsica with talk of negotiations on independence. Today, Biancucci is the head of an autonomous fraction in Parliament that is opposed to violence. He wants to make Corsica a model of tolerant society. If someone lives in a corner, then they risk rejecting others and will end up in a crisis that is no longer controllable. Not everyone welcomes his change of policy. Some see the fact that a former freedom fighter is now looking for a peaceful solution as treachery. I don't approve. They shouldn't have called a ceasefire. Back then they made sure nobody could simply do as they please. Now they've laid down their weapons to appear in a good light. But in reality, there are still some who are prepared to fight. At the end of April, this Muslim prayer room in Ajaccio burned down after a break-in. The Muslims immediately suspected nationalists were to blame. And even if the police cannot confirm that, their fear continues. I work with Corsicans. I grew up with Corsicans, ate with them, played soccer with them. I am a Corsican. All this sudden hatred worries us. We're afraid for our wives and children, our families. And the feeling is unbearable. The young right-wing nationalists want to see results. A secret splinter group of the FLNC recently announced it was prepared to bear arms 
this time against IS. A sign that Biancucci and his Femo Akotica supporters are losing their influence. I'm worried that the French government will be deaf to all of our demands, even if we reach a unanimous decision. We know that would lead to a return to violence. And that would be a huge problem. Still, so far, Biancucci refuses to declare the Corsican nationalists' political experiment a failure. He sees it as his task to reunite young and old nationalists.